Did you know that improper calculations in engineering can lead to catastrophic structural failures? Understanding stress in materials is absolutely critical if we want to keep everything from bridges to buildings standing tall and safe, and that is why you will be tested on this crucial subject during the FE exam. In this week's Pass the FE exam video, we will be calculating the combined stress in a cantilever beam to help you with your FE exam preparation. This problem was created and solved by mechatronics engineer Shante Thunderspay and is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the FE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem-solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for FE exam prep. Let's dive in. In this scenario, we have a 300 mm cantilevered beam with a 20 by 20 mm square cross section. One end of the beam is securely fixed while the other end carries two applied loads, an axial force Fx of 200 Newton and a perpendicular force Fy of 150 Newton. Our goal is to determine the maximum combined stress produced by these forces at the base of the beam. Focusing specifically on point A. Before we jump into the solution, let's set the stage by exploring the concept of combined stress. This combined stress state occurs when an object experiences different kinds of loads at the same time. For instance, a beam subject to both axial and bending forces will develop a combination of these induced stresses throughout its structure. In general, there are five key stress types you should be familiar with to be able to solve these kinds of problems. And they are listed here as axial stress, bending stress, shear stress, torsional stress, and thermal stress. We'll start off with a quick explanation of each stress case, starting off with axial stress. The stress occurs when a force is applied along the axis of an object, placing it in either tension or compression. If a beam is stretched along its length, it creates positive or tensile stress, while compression results in negative stress. This applied force creates a uniform normal stress distribution across the entire cross-sectional area of the beam, because every part of the cross-section experiences the same amount of force per unit area. The FE handbook also supplies us with a formula to calculate this normally distributed stress, which is simply and intuitively defined as the applied axial force divided by the object's cross-sectional area. Now, let's explore how bending stress can affect an object. When we apply two bending moments to either side of a beam, as shown here, the moments cause one side of the beam to expand while compressing the opposite side. In this specific graphic, the top side of the beam compresses, resulting in negative stress in this area, while the bottom is in tension, translating to positive stress. And since we have this negative stress on the top side, with positive stress on the other end, we can intuitively deduce that the stress should be zero at the center line of the beam, which is referred to as the beam's neutral axis. As we move further away from the neutral axis, the magnitude of stress increases, which results in the linear bending stress distribution shown here. The FE hand book once again supplies us with a formula to determine the normal stress created by this bending at any location along the beam's cross section. However, we will be looking at this in more detail once we get to our problem. Now, Let's talk about transverse shear stress. This type of stress happens when opposing forces act along the beam's cross section, like the forces shown here. These forces try to slide the layers of the material past each other, causing the beam to deform. However, the stress distribution isn't normal across the section. It follows a parabolic pattern with zero stress at the outer edges and maximum stress near the center. This happens because the outer layers move less, while the inner layers experience more sliding. The greatest resistance to this sliding occurs at the neutral axis, which is why the stress is highest here. For reference, we've also included the FE handbook formula used 
used to calculate this shear stress. Now let's look at torsional shear stress. This stress happens when a twisting force acts on a beam, as shown here. The stress at the center of the cross section is zero and increases towards the edges. This is because the fibers near the center barely twist while the outer fibers experiences the most rotation. As you move outward from the center, the shear stress increases linearly, reaching its maximum at the outer surface, where the material resists twisting the most. For reference, we've included the FE handbook formula here again. Lastly, let's talk about thermal stress. This type of stress happens when a material expands or contracts due to a change in temperature, which is especially important in structures exposed to different environmental conditions. The FE handbook includes a formula to calculate how much a beam will expand or shrink with temperature changes, and this displacement can then be used to determine the resulting stress if needed. But now that we've covered the main types of stress, let's move on and figure out which of these apply to our example. Let's start by taking a closer look at our system. Focusing specifically on point A, we can kind of isolate this location by examining an imaginary cross-section of the beam right at that point. Given the axial force Fx and the perpendicular force Fy apply to the beam, we can identify that the beam will experience both axial stress and bending stress. But what about shear stress? To answer this, let's refer to the transverse shear stress distribution. As shown, the stress is always zero at the outer edge of a cross-section, and this is exactly where point A is located. This means that point A will not experience any contribution from shear stress, leaving us with only the axial and bending stresses to consider in our analysis. Let's take a closer look at the axial stress in our beam. With the axial force Fx pulling on one end, the beam responds with an equal but opposite reaction force at the fixed support, putting the entire beam in tension. This tension creates a uniform stress distribution across the beam's cross-section, as shown in the diagram. And because the beam is in tension, we expect the axial stress to be positive. Now to calculate the stress at point A, we can use the simple formula from the FE handbook, stress equals force divided by area. All we have to do is plug in the given values, and we get an axial stress of 0.5 megapascals. And with that done, we're ready to move on to the next part of our question, evaluating the bending stress. Let's get a clearer picture of bending stress by looking at the beam from the side. When the force Fy is applied, the beam responds with an equal but opposite reaction force at the fixed end, which could induce shear stress. However, as we already know, shear stress doesn't contribute to the stress at point A, so we can set that aside for now. What's important here is that the force also creates a reaction moment at the fixed end, M, which is responsible for the bending stress in our section. Now, according to the FE handbook, we can classify bending as either positive or negative. A positive bending moment curves the beam upward, with the top fibers in compression and the bottom in tension. But in our case, the reaction moment bends the beam downward, meaning we're dealing with negative bending. This gives us a useful framework for how these stresses behave in this scenario. Now, we can use the equation from the FE handbook to calculate calculate the bending stress at any vertical point along the beam's cross section. To do this, we'll need three key values, the bending moment m acting on the section, the moment of inertia i of the cross section, and the distance y from the neutral axis to the point of interest. It's important to note that positive y refers to a point above the neutral axis, while negative y corresponds to a point below it. For point A, since it's located at the top of the beam, y is positive and equals half of the beam's thickness, which gives us 10 millimeters or 0.01 meters. Next, Let's calculate the bending moment m. Remember, we've already established that because the beam is experiencing negative bending, the moment will also be negative. But to find the moment's magnitude, we simply multiply the force Fy by the distance from the fixed end, which is 0.3 meters. And this gives us a moment of negative 45 newton meters. The last variable we need to account for is the inertia of the beam. The FE handbook defines this as the cross-sectional area's base multiplied by its height cubed, all divided by 12. These variables are both given as 20 millimeters in our case. So we find the inertia 13.3 times 10 to the negative 9 meters to the power 4. And remember, since we're working with a square, you could have used either of those formulas since the beam's base is equal to its height. With all the values in place, we can now calculate the bending stress at point A. 
Just a quick heads up, make sure to substitute the reaction moment as negative. Those double negatives in the equation will cancel each other out, giving us a positive stress value. The bending stress at A is then found to be positive 33.75 megapascal, which matches our earlier expectations. Since the beam is being stretched and expanded on its top surface, it is also experiencing positive tensile stress. Finally, all that is left to do is look at the combined effect of both of these stresses. In this case, we got lucky because both the axial and bending stresses act in the same direction, allowing us to simply add the two stresses from each loading case. When we sum them up, the total combined stress at point A comes out to be 34.25 megapascal. And that completes our problem. Comparing our solution to the given options, we find that the correct answer is C. Before we wrap up, let's touch on a few key considerations that will help you tackle similar problems. While today's problem focused on axial and bending stresses, it's equally important to understand shear, torsional, and thermal stresses. These forces often appear in combination, so recognizing and knowing how to analyze them is essential for solving more complex problems. So on that note, let us know if you'd like to tackle these topics in a future video. You'll also want to become familiar with the von Mises stress formula, which helps assess whether a material will yield under multi-directional loading. In this question, we had two stress cases acting in the same direction, so a simple addition of these stresses was sufficient. But if you ever come across stresses acting at different angles, von Mises might help you calculate the combined stress. Lastly, remember to stay consistent with your sign conventions, especially for bending moments. A small mistake with positive and negative signs can throw off your entire analysis, so double-checking your work is crucial. Mastering these concepts will not only prepare you for the FE exam, but also strengthen your engineering skills moving forward. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, we will answer more of your FE exam questions and run through more practice problems. Pass the FE exam will publish videos weekly, so please be sure to hit that subscribe button as you'll get expert tips and tricks, including practice problem solutions weekly to ensure that you pass the FE exam. And please, I encourage you to ask questions in the comments below this video, and I will read and respond to you in future videos. So maybe there's a topic that you want us to cover or a question that you need answered. Pass the FE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the FE Exam.